Fearless video did actually pretty decent. You guys seem to be interested in my monkey opinions on the anime for watching. I separated the categories with and color coded it better because you, you guys told me that it was kind of trash. So we have different tiers this time, all right? From the top, it's peak. And peak is pretty much like the best of the best in how I enjoyed it, right? This is not a tier list on how good the show is. It's all about my personal enjoyment and preference. There's peak, great, good, mid, and the worst tier is dookie. Here we go, all right? Starting off with slime. And I'm not going to put um, the shows in peak immediately. Because I think peak is like the best of the best. Therefore, at the end of the tier list, we should do adjustments relative to what's on the board. And the best out of them should be placed into peak. Therefore, I'm not going to place anything into peak. It's highest. It's going to be great. And then we'll adjust later, right? I think it's safe to say that Tensor last episode was great, right? We finally had Hinata versus Rimuru round two. Hinata's fucking crazy transformations. Even Shion popping off and everyone else. Like, last episode was actually fucking great. I was worried that they might, like, do a little detour and go to families and do the Diablo shit. But luckily, they delivered, and it was actually amazing. So, I'm going to put it in great tier. Mushoku Tensei. Uh, I'm going to put it in great. It was not, quote-unquote, exciting. But the fact that we're back on the road... We're on like an adventure journey going to, you know, Begari. We teleported there. Nana Hoshi got us the great revelation that, hey, there's these teleportation circles that me and Orsa has been using. And we even saw like Orsa's clothing in the closet. Some people were writing even fanfic. Bro was like, as Rudy opened the closet and found Orsted's nicely folded clothing, Orsted walked out of the shower dripping with sweat. I'm like, what are you fucking writing? Anyways, Mushoku Tensei, I think, was in a great tier. Date Alive. Date Alive, it's probably going to be good or great. Maybe I'm putting too many shows on, you know. Maybe Mushoku Tensei should be good. Was it as good as Tensura? Mushoku Tensei was... I don't think I enjoyed it as much as Tensura. But this could simply shift like this later. Like this, right? Because everything is relative to Tensura right now. Tensura is like the ceiling of my enjoyment. So I think I'm going to place it in great for now. And place these two shows in good. Good doesn't mean bad. It was a fucking good show, right? Great is just league ahead right now. Just comparison. But I'll adjust later. Date Alive. <laughs> More girls got donutted. Westcott versus Shido. That was actually fucking peak. Westcott versus Shido, bro. The Kamehameha coming out of nowhere. That was some season three quote-unquote OVA filler shit but like it wasn't filler and everyone I'm sure forgot but it's like the way to beat someone is by using a technique that you yourself didn't really know about right and Shido was like knocked unconscious he was like he was like roofied by origami right in that episode so plot wise it does make sense and the whole ridiculousness you know it's on brand for data live I think it was pretty good I'm gonna put it in great now could it have been paced differently I don't fucking know. I haven't read the light novel, but my personal enjoyment as an anime only, it was pretty fucking good. Kaiju 8? Kaiju 8 fucking popped off. Kaiju 8 is actually fucking popping off every episode. Kaiju 8? Straight up, dude. I think it's safe to maybe put like these two up here right now. Because this is relative. I, I think so. Kaiju 8, it's something fucking special, man. Every episode, they just escalate the stakes. More crazy shit happening. It's like, are we gonna die? Are people gonna die? Kafka comes showing up. Everyone's fucking just balling out. And we have Hoshina versus Kafka next episode. It's not even over yet. It's not even over yet. I think it's safe to be in peak. I think it's safe to be in peak. Yes, Reno was amazing last episode. Iharu, bit of an L, but it was important to set him up as a character that not only... In the beginning, he's, like, jealous of Reno's, you know, advancement. But then he, like, takes a look at himself and he realizes the person that I should be chasing isn't Reno. It's myself and I should be better and I should be happy for Reno's success. I think the characters are actually great there. Demon Slayer! Listen. Listen. Demon Slayer, like, was it that good, guys? I don't know. I, I feel like Demon Slayer last episode was a bit of a fucking snooze fest, man. Right? Like, and it's not even like Demon Slayer's fault. It's, it's a fucking training arc and nothing like really hype could happen. Now, later on, when we actually have crazy fights against the Hashiras in the training, which I hope actually happens, 
maybe then I'll change my opinion of Demon Slayer. But like last episode, again, these are ratings based on like last episode, like the most recent episode that we watched. Ah, the Usui Tengen fucking training arc, I felt like it wasn't that really exciting. I was more along those like just laughing at all these NPCs that's gonna be cannon fodder that's getting beat so that it can fucking train. They should be on, put on retirement, bro. They should fucking enjoy the little time they have before they fucking die, but... I guess it was nice to see them all unite under Tanjiro, and then, you know, Tengen wanted to go back into battle. A little bit of the Infinite Castle teaser, right? I thought the Infinite Castle stuff was, but, like, for the episode itself, I think it's safe to say it was, like, a mid-tier, right? Kono Suba! Let's put it on good for now and think about what actually happened. Konosuba last episode was a little bit of a weird spot where we just kind of finished an arc and came home and we're just kind of like setting a bunch of stuff up, right? It was very like every skit didn't really link and it was just kind of random funs here and there. And I don't think that the episode itself was intended to be an amazing episode. It was just kind of this weird transitionary episode kind of set up. I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it was great either. It was good. It was good. I don't think there was anything special about it. The week before, it was fucking peak. But last episode with the chicken setup and the other stuff, I think I'll just put it on good. I think I'll just put it on good. I kind of want to put Mushoku Tensei up to great. I don't know. Suddenly I'm remembering the racist, you know, desert soundtracks. The racist soundtrack's gonna put it in great for me, man. Windbreaker. Windbreaker goes to great. Maybe even peak. Sakura versus Togame. The ending into Umemiya. Ah, uh, maybe it's gonna be like between here. Be like between Great and Peak. I, I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe there should be another tier between these two. Fuck, I'm not sure, man. But last episode was really good. Windbreaker? I am so surprised at how much I'm enjoying Windbreaker. I thought it'd be a dumbass delinquent, you know, just combat show where it's just like, wow, fights, there it is. But the show is not really only about fights. The fights are important and the choreography and animation, they do it really well. But the backstories, I'm actually like giving a fuck. Don't know why. Half the times I'm joking about how gay it is and how much of a yaoi bait it is. And the other half the time, I've got almost tears falling out of my eyes because of how heartfelt the flashbacks are. I don't think it was quite peak, I think this week's episode, Choji vs. Umemiya, probably will get the peak tier. But the most recent one, Togami vs. Sakura and then lead up to Umemiya, I think I'm gonna put it in great. I think I'm comfortable in putting in great right now. Level 2 cheat, peak. Level 2 cheat, bro. Level, level 2. What is up with this show? What is up with this show, bro? This show is insane. This show is cracked. Every episode, I feel like. It should be so mid, yet the character interactions, the nonsensical fun that I'm having with just watching, you know, Danna Sama and Fenris and all the girls getting warped because they gotta pay fucking rent. Bali Rosa having fucking, <laughs> fucking dreams of vision of seeing the demon lord, the, the double date, bro. And then the shitty hero and the gold digger getting a shovel and then falling down a hole. Actually, so fucking good. Peak. Peak, peak enjoyment for me. Peak fucking enjoyment for me. Ah. Nah, I'm putting, I'm putting too many shows in peak now, though. Fuck. But these episodes truly were fucking peak. Fuck. They, I, 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 I feel like you gotta be careful with the amount of shows that you put in peak. Like, not every episode can be peak. But, like, these recent episodes, like, all four of them, has been just, like, popping off. Maybe I'm being too generous with the ratings here, right? Maybe 10 stars should go down here. Maybe Kaiju 8. I don't know, but these are all really good. The last episodes of Seven Prince also, it was fucking great. The revelation, well, was it that good actually? Maybe I'll put it in great. Because like, nothing crazy has happened just yet, right? Because, like, the episode before, the crazy reveal and stuff, and then, you know, the I'm Atomic scene was amazing, but the most recent Seventh Prince, it was a little bit of a fight with Guizarme, but the fight itself, most of it was just the barrier floating around, and then our Shoda getting pierced, and then a bunch of stuff with, like, um, with, like, uh, what's it called? 
the uh, the assassin skill, running away and having you know little self sacrifices and sofa showing up. It could definitely be peak or great easily. I don't know. I don't know. I may maybe I'll put it here. Maybe I'll put it down here. Next episode, I think is gonna be insane. Ah, uh, I, I I think great is better. I think great is better. There are some weird things that they're doing. It's it's so weird how like the intermission scenes just happen. Like like the the uh, what, what's it called? You know how in Demon Slayer the ending, the outro scenes, the the random like little fun fact of the day stuff, right? Seven Prince like puts that in the middle, and it's kind of like weird as fuck, and it kind of like disrupts the flow of the episode. But I didn't think that last episode was like bad per se. No 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 no. I think last episode was great. I don't think. I, I think last episode felt kind of like a, a setup episode, don't you think? Last episode felt like a setup where like Guizarme and like Lloyd is like fighting, but it's like the main fight hasn't really happened yet. They're just kind of like testing each other and they're moving maps. And most of it was kind of centered around the assassin's guild and their self-sacrifice and then getting bailed out by Sofa and them. And then Aru also getting set up to show up. It was kind of, it was like a hype setup episode. So I'm going to put it in great. Next episode, I think will be actually fucking insane. It'll go off. Viral hit. I'll put it in good. I'll put it in good. The fight's about to happen with the Tezong guy, right? With the uh, Mr. Martial Artist fucking Taekwondo guy. Nothing crazy happened. It was more of setup, training stuff, learning about how we're going to fight this guy. The revelation that it's not going to rain anymore. So we got to fucking find a bathroom and fucking water the bathroom. Imagine the piss on the floor, man. Oh, imagine the fucking piss on the floor and all that nasty ass shit. And you fucking pour water on the... Ugh. It's fucking actually disgusting. But hey, I'll put it in good. I don't think it was like bad i don't think it was great i think it was just i think it was just good just set up getting ready next episode probably gonna be a great i'm not sure if it's gonna get peaked but it was just good elf bride this just cunny as fuck elf bride i don't feel comfortable putting in a peak just yet maybe the next episode when lolly you know because like the lolly ran away our child ran away but i'm sure they're gonna do some kind of crazy, um, what's it called? Uh, reveal that the grandpa maybe didn't actually kill dragons and he's a wholesome dude. There's a lot of setups and mysteries going around, right? Autobots is mentioned, a different faction that wants to be anti, like pot, like pro sorcerer coexisting. The Chastille pranking scene was very funny. It was very cunning for sure, but I need to be reserved in my ranking of putting so many things in peak. I think that it's safely in great, and it could definitely... I, I'm gonna put it in great. I'm, I'm gonna put it in great for now. Spice and Wolf, I ain't watching that. We, we dropped it. Uh, this is what the fuck. <laughs> Remonster? Dookie? Should Remonster be Dookie tier? Are you guys actually enjoying Remonster? Recently, I'm not giving a fuck about Remonster. Every episode has... Like, like, the reason I enjoyed Remonster in the beginning was because of how shocking it was to kidnap people and then, you know, the sussy shit that we do with goblins in the cave. But after that, like, do you actually give a fuck about the fights? No. The fights are so rushed. Everything is so rushed. The world building is pretty bad. And when you have a world like that, the fighting itself aren't really enjoyable. What I really care about is the dumb shit that was happening in the earlier of the season. But recently, eh. I don't know. I'm just not really feeling Remonster, man. I really not. I think that, like, there's no one I care about exactly. Like, in level 2 cheat, I actually care about each character. I care that, you know, fucking Bali Rosa has all these insecurities of being a you know, noble that fell off. And now they have to fucking get into an arranged marriage to save the world. I love the fact that the shitty hero keeps getting into these dumb fucking situations where they keep suffering and the gold digger is also sticking around. I love how Fenris keeps, you know, going after Dana Sama and gets jealous over, you know, other girls showing a little bit of affection towards Dana Sama. Because they know how to do their characters well. They stay to what they're good at. And everything isn't rushed. And I feel like I'm... I can, like, experience the show and feel like I'm... Like, I can relate to the characters and actually give a fuck about them. Remonster? Every episode, it's like, oh, this happened, they eat that, and then this happened, there's Pelsay now, this is Hopeji now, oh, this is, um, uh, something Kichi now, oh, this is, um, Bloodsay, this is Hopesay, oh, yeah, this is a Dap, she's a Dapnir now, you don't, know, you don't know what a Dapnir is? Oh, by the way, there's these weapons, oh, we're at war now, oh, we're battling now, oh, and we're done, and we're gonna drop the girls off, and then we're gonna eat this guy, and then, it's like, I don't know, I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it, man, I'm gonna put it in Dookie right now. Newgate? 
This shit was kind of dookie, bro. <laughs> last episode, seriously. Last episode. What the fuck happened? The main, like, like, it was so drawn out. Nothing fucking happened. It was getting a carrot so that our girls' rears, our posteriors aren't bad. Nothing fucking happened. We traveled. And now finally we're at our support character's place. This guy that's supposed to be dying apparently. Like, sorry, man. Like the episode, like, I, uh, I did enjoy it more than Remonster, but not that much. Maybe it should be mid. Maybe it should be mid. I'll put it in mid because the tiaras aren't pit. Fine, fine. All right. I'll put it in mid just because the tiaras aren't pit and Shni jumping off a cliff and the cameraman from the bottom angle. I'll put it there. Appraisal Isekai. Last episode. Last, last episode, you know, with our dad dying, I, I think it would have been like great or peak. Probably like high end of great. But the most recent episode was... Kind of just like, um, the, what's the word? The aftermath of our father passing away. I'm going to meet the shadows and then getting baited because it was a trap. It was kind of set up. I don't think it was great. I don't think it was bad. It's just good. It's good, right? It's just, it's good. Skimichi? Oh, this just gotta be in fucking... I'm putting in peak. Skimichi was a peak this season. This episode, bro, this episode was peak. So many things happened last episode. Like, Teal, fucking just like, just trolling with the training. Sure, it started off with that. Emma and them and Tomoe, and they're all popping off. And then, Sophia Bulga shitting on Trash Moki. Oh. Oh, dude, that alone. That alone was fucking great. And then, and then Hibiki's armor. <laughs> Hibiki's goddess armor. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of peak. Makoto's, you know, Henshin, you know, we got the Sentai outfit on too. Last episode, I think it's safely peak. Last episode was actually fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's peak. Mahoka. It's like somewhere between here. Like I even made a video. I, I I even made a video on like how disappointed I was. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. In this category, right? The reason why I don't shit on Newgate, the reason I don't shit on Remonster, or even other like quote unquote lower shows like, you know, viral hit in terms of performance. It's because I've seen season one Mahoka and I've seen the potential of this show. And when you give me something like that, the bar is raised so high because I know what it can do. But seeing what this is now in this current season, it's just so sad. It's just so sad. It's just a fucking shadow of what it once was. The steeplechase, a lot of people also said that it was not supposed to be this crazy climactic moment. It's just all set up. Yeah, how long is the setup gonna happen? Season two was all set up. Season three is all set up. Ever since the parasites entered the story, Mahoka went downhill. Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. I think I'm fucking right. Ever since these parasites showed up, this fucking show has been fucking garbage, bro. Just straight up fucking dookie. Like, the yeah, parasites is like the worst thing that could have been introduced to this show. Because now you relegated all the opponents into these Clone Wars fucking random bots. I have no fucking stakes or threat from them. I don't give a fuck about them. If The reason why Season 1 was so hype was because they set up these characters to... Well, first of all, you had Onisama being able to pop off and everyone looking down on him. That's not going to last too long. So that's like a special period. But beyond that, right? You have these like quote unquote antagonists like the Crimson Prince being fucking hyped up, right? These characters I actually give a fuck about, and that could actually stand a toe toe against Mo uh, Onisama back in season one. They didn't really, but I thought they could. Parasites, there's no fucking build up. I don't give a fuck, bro. It's just like, uh, 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 I'm gonna put it in mid. Steeplechase ending was extremely disappointing. I feel just, I just feel disappointed. It should probably be in good. Like, it should probably be in good tier, but it's like, I'm gonna put it in mid. I'm just sticking around because of the Yotsuba milfs and stuff, and I'm just still hoping that Mahoka will come back one day, but it's just so sad. And the people that say shit like this, I'm just glad that we're getting Mahoka. I think that you have a very bad mentality. 
you should not be glad that you're getting an anime that's a poor trans poor adaptation. You're just like getting shitty adaptation. You're just happy it's happening. No, why are you thinking like that? You had this one chance for this anime to get adapted and you're letting a shitty adaptation do it? No, I'd rather fucking wait. I'll fucking wait five years. I'll fucking wait five years and get a proper adaptation. I'll be here, bro. I don't give a fuck about rush adaptations where they don't put the love or resources into it. And people will say, well, they were too busy. You can't blame Studio 8. They were busy doing Tensura. What kind of fucking excuse is that? Why would you play defense for, you know, fucking 8-bit studio? Don't you think that that's dumb? Think about this. Why the fuck are they taking on projects that they can't deliver on and giving you a shitty experience? Fine, if you're gonna try to fucking make Tensura good, don't try to fucking do Mahoko on top of that as well. You're being fucking greedy and then the consumers are fucking paying for it, dude. I think it's a terrible fucking argument that, oh, because, you know, 8-Bit Studio is doing all these projects, you shouldn't be so harsh on them. Fuck you. The studio should have never picked it up in the beginning. Don't start something you can't fucking finish, dude. Trash. Yozakura, I'll put it in good. I'll put Yozakura in good. Yozakura was a bit of setup. Every episode's fucking setup, though, bro. Holy shit. When is the Kuro, Kuri, Kuro Yasu fucking, Kuro Yuri fucking art beginning? It kind of did. The ending of it was pretty fun, right? The revelation that Tayo's family did get assassinated. And it's not an accident. So it's like, oh, wait. Things are actually kind of getting heated up. But if it takes you like seven or eight weeks to get heated up, I think you're doing something wrong, and you're gonna lose the appeal of the normies. And, of course, the manga readers are gonna say, Well, those people never even deserve to watch our anime. That is a very small-minded, gatekeeping, elitist mindset that doesn't help anybody, except stroke your fucking egos. That's such a dumb take. An anime should be able to capture an audience fucking immediately and continue onwards. And if it can't do that, maybe your source material is actually not that good. If it takes you 300 chapters, bro, just trust me, man. One Piece gets so good when you go 300 chapters in, then you just gotta just, just last the first 300 chapters. Well, I'm not actually saying One Piece is bad. I'm just giving a very uh, normie take that a lot of people can't start, you know, long running shonen's because it takes so long to quote unquote get good, right? But I'm just saying as an example, if it actually does take that long to get good, maybe it's not that good, man. But uh, this didn't even fucking air. This, this, this didn't even fucking air. Also, this is, uh, we should call this the, this tier. Mo, uh, m m this was not even airing. It, it had a break. Uh, Sentai. Sentai. I'm going to put it in good to great. There were some cool revelations. There was some cool hype shit happening, right, with the bosses. Our fucking Yandere, you know, Duster clone, you know, pet just got out of the closet and shit. Uh, the fight itself... I don't really give a fuck about the fights, to be honest, that much. It's just kind of setting up. I think I'm going to put it here, and the next episode's going to be crazy. Because, like, last episode was kind of set up to understand what, like, the true definition of the test was. And it was, like, 5v5 later next episode and I think it's actually gonna happen last episode was kind of like set up getting betrayed understanding what's actually going on and some other you know plot details I don't think it was like it's definitely here maybe tail end maybe great maybe here I'm not sure I'm not sure maybe I'll put it in good for now and blue archive well, unfortunately, we are like one week behind on Blue Archive because like we should be we're watching Blue Archive tonight, like after this tier list. So unfortunately, I haven't watched the most recent episode, but the most recent episode for me was the aftermath of what happened with, you know, Gehenna. And we got the we got more plus stuff, you know, with, um, you know, OG Sun, more crazy revelations that all the buildings might be sold up because of OG Sun, right? I don't think it was great, but I don't think it was bad. I think it was just good. You want to have a cunny tier? <laughs> if we have cunny tier always, then we're going to have to just... I don't know. It, it was great. I, I, I think it was good. I don't think it was great. I think it was fun. And that's it. Now, let's do a final look at the tier list. Remaster? I'm going to put it in Dookie, man. I, I honestly... Remaster... I'm just keeping up with it because the initial premise was fun, but other than that, meh. These three, I think they truly were mid. 
Mahoka honestly should be in good, but I'm just like criticizing it bad. Like it, it's I it's just I don't know, man. They just built a steeplechase and it just didn't deliver. And you just can't tell me that everything is just set up, bro. D3, D6, I think it's safe to say it was good. I think, I, yeah, these five definitely stood out between this. And then the peak. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this tier list. And again, this tier list is not supposed to represent what is an objectively good anime. It is my personal preference, my personal enjoyment. So there's nothing you motherfuckers can say about this tier list. But hey, if you agree with me or disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Let me know what animes you thought actually stood out. If you can make any fucking defenses against, you know, any of these shows, go ahead. But again, if I fucking hear motherfuckers saying, well, actually, Mahoka should be rated higher because Ape Studios only has so much resources and they're probably just slam shut the fuck up. That's a terrible fucking take. They should have never picked up something they couldn't have finished. Fuck you. I'll see you next week.